Hi, good morning. Welcome to Body Wise Body Work. My name is Dawn Spiegelberg, and I'm joining you today from Bothell, Washington, just outside of Seattle. And the weather is beautiful. It's awesome. Today we're going to talk about the meaning of life, and uh, it's a continuation of our series on your life purpose. I'd like to know if you've figured out what your life purpose is. If you don't know what it is, please feel free to contact me, give me a call, PM me on Messenger, and let me know. I'm happy to give you a 20-minute conversation where we can find out and discover exactly what it is. Before we move on to the meaning of your life, I would like to spout about David Nagel, who is a mentor and who just gave a workshop the last two days regarding subconscious success. And uh, what's really amazing is there is a book written by, I believe the author is Thomas Murphy, about uh, the subconscious. And the kinds of things that our subconscious does, uh, what we believe, and uh, how we move through life based on the subconscious beliefs that we have and the stories that we've learned about ourselves. Um, another spout about to uh, Lauren Bullock and her husband, Bob Bullock. They are the owners of Eye of the Needle Winery and they were with me at the workshop yesterday. A lot of fun. Wonderful to connect with them, and uh, if you're interested in finding out about their wine expertise, feel free to visit them on Saturdays and Sundays. Their winery is open 1 to 5. And for those of you who are my current clients, I will be sending out invitations to a special holiday event that will take place at Eye of the Needle Winery on December 17th, so keep an eye out for that. Exciting things coming up. Thanksgiving is next week, and I have been sending messages about gratitude and quotes about gratitude, so find those. You can connect with me on um, social media using my handle, at BodyWiseBody. You can also find my website, www.BodyWiseBodyWork.com, and I'm also featured on page 10 of the Natural Choice Directory, so you can find me there. Spout about Martha Childress, who does a lot of work on the Natural Choice Directory. There's also an online version, so you can find great resources there, and it's local. So that's very exciting. Whatever you need, you can find it on the Natural Choice Directory. So about the meaning of life and the meaning of your life, I would like to take a moment to discuss what life is not, and this will be certainly an interesting conversation, what your life is not. So you are not defined by your job, which we know because it changes 10 to 15 times before you're the age of 42, according to statistics, so you can't possibly be defined by your job. What's fascinating to me is that when we meet people, there's always a conversation about what we do, what our jobs are. And so people use that as a frame of reference to get to know other people. They also um, sum us up based on what we look like and how we dress. And most people can tell that I'm a woman right off the bat because I wear makeup, I have long hair, I wear skirts, I dress like a woman. So. I'm not defined, however, by the fact that I am a girl. My life purpose certainly isn't defined by the fact that I'm a woman, except we have so many roles regarding our sex and gender that people are really getting confused. And it seems to me um, the feminists in the world, so I'm in support of my own femaleness, and uh, I certainly appreciate the women who fought for the rights of women. I heard a statistic yesterday that women could not own property until 1947. No, 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 excuse me, 1974. That wasn't very long ago. And before that, women were property. And so there's a lot of changes that have happened in the last 150 years, 200 years regarding women 
and women's roles. I was listening to a program yesterday that was listed on um, some program, listed, I've forgotten exactly, the assistant professor and what the college was, but she decided to make a list of information and websites that didn't provide um, accurate information. And the program I was listening to was one of those listed, so they were rejoicing and the fact that they were getting um, more more um, visibility because they were appearing on that list. And it, it's also interesting to me that there is now an effort to censor news programs that are considered false. And from my perspective, I really think that goes against the freedom of speech. So whether you're right or whether you're wrong or whether you believe what I do, as long as you're not doing something that goes against the laws, which is killing someone, taking their stuff, taking their wife, right? Like, as long as you're not breaking any laws, you have the freedom to voice your opinion. And apparently there is a movement now that is removing that ability from other sites. So keep that in mind when you're watching the news and looking at other websites and pay close attention to that. So with with regard to roles and especially women's roles, I find that my role as a woman, I'm really trying to understand how it's been influenced by the women who came before me. My mother, in fact, raised me to believe that I needed someone to take care of me. And she didn't say it overtly. She didn't say, oh, you have to have someone to take care of you. She would say it from a place of love and from a place of concern. She would say, oh, I just want someone to take care of you. But the message behind that is that I require someone to take care of me, that I'm not a whole person or I'm not capable of taking care of myself. So imagine when I chose to get married, how happy she was because I was then fulfilling this idea that it's my role, my purpose to be taken care of by someone else. And I waited quite a while to get married. And so I'm sure that was a disappointment to her because I spent all of my 20s not being married and, and pursuing different careers, different um, positions of work and uh, different athletic outlets. And I found one in particular that I loved the most. I'm a former fencer. And um, the fencing also does not define me. Athleticism doesn't define me. So my body does not define who I am. My hair color doesn't define me except other people use it to define me. So they'll look at me and see my red hair and say, ooh, she's got a temper. Or they'll talk about me being um, the redheaded stepchild and being rejected, right? And these are a lot of things that appear in lives that then define them. And People have all sorts of stories, no matter what the color of your skin is, no matter what the color of your hair is, no matter what sex you're born with or sex you prefer. All of that stuff is being mishmashed into a mixing bowl of people being uncertain about everything. And so what is really important for you to understand is the meaning of life and your life purpose. There are so many things it is not. And yet there is one thing that it is, and that one thing will help you navigate through your life much more easily, much more fluidly. I asked a question at the workshop yesterday regarding the roles that I've, I've accepted in my current life. Some of the roles are that I'm a wife, I am a mother of two children, I'm a business owner, and I am a healer. I'm a body worker, and I use essential oils and herbs to promote healing. And there's a lot of stereotypes around all of those things and I, I do not live by the stereotypes. However, I still take care of my children. Even though there is a traditional idea of what a wife and a mother is, I still wash my kids clothes and I still feed them breakfast every day. And not because I'm, I'm defined in that role, it's because I choose to nurture my children and take care of them. So even though you've accepted a position in life or you've made choices that put you into a role, 
you can choose to define how you live that role. And so yesterday, the question I asked was, how do we live in a role? How do we choose what aspects of a role that we will live by without being dominated by the ideas surrounding that role in particular? And I'll give you an example. As a woman and as a person who heals, uh, as a body worker, so I'm a, I'm a body healer. I also help people heal their minds, although I'm not a therapist, a mental therapist at all. Uh, the gateway to healing the mind comes from the body. And also, I help people's spirits heal, which is the reason for my tagline, move your body, free your mind, and elevate your spirit. And if you're curious to find out how your mind can be freed, um, all you need to do is look up information about alpha brainwaves. I actually did a program on alpha brainwaves previously, and one way our mind can be free is to move outside of theta brainwaves, and theta brainwaves are the survival, they are uh, the thinking, the stress-related brainwaves that we need when it's important for us to make decisions and make choices regarding our lives. Unfortunately, we spend way too much time in theta brain waves, and it's possible for you to get in alpha brain waves. And one very important way to do that is through movement. So moving your body allows your brain to attain the state of alpha, which then allows your mind to think creatively, and uh, it's really a beautiful thing. So moving your body frees your mind, and it also elevates your spirit. Another amazing thing that I've discovered in the work that I do is that when our bodies are aligned and moving freely, and that's specific alignment, so posture-based, when our bodies are aligned, our spirits also feel aligned, feel aligned, and we are able to see more clearly what our life purpose is and the meaning of life. So the question that I had asked regarding how it is that I can fulfill the obligations of my role but continue moving forward and pursuing uh, what I'm meant to do and make the right choices. So we're all given choices every day. As adults, we're given the choice to eat breakfast or not eat breakfast, what clothes we wear, the car that we drive. But based on the fact that we're here with a divine specific life purpose, how do we make those choices? How do we know what brand of car to drive? How do we know where to live? And the answer was absolutely brilliant. And it's something that I don't always remember to do. And after the workshop, I've decided that every morning and every afternoon and every evening, I am choosing to set aside time to remind myself what my life purpose is and the way in which we continue moving forward making the right choices and living our fullest potential is by keeping our desire keeping our life purpose at the forefront of our mind what's amazing about that keeping the vision of what we're meant to be and our most uh most fullest highest potential being when you're able to do that, obstacles, choices, the things that might get in our way, they fall away and choices are much easier. So let me encourage you, if you don't know your life purpose, please find out what it is. I have several exercises to help you pinpoint it. One is the yes, no exercise. Feel free to practice that one on a regular basis. That will certainly point you in the direction to continuing to pursue your life purpose. The other exercise is to ask several people uh, descriptive words that they would use for you, five, six, seven. And uh, once you've got those words, actually um, write down words that you use to describe yourself to and look for the similarities, look for the patterns. That's very important in guiding you to discovering your life purpose. And listen, I'll say again, if you need help with that, please contact me. We can have a short phone call and I can help you identify your life purpose. It makes such a difference. And understand that every single person 
is here to fulfill their purpose and no one is duplicated in their purpose. So when you look at other individuals and you see that they have something that you would like or they have a personality trait that you would like to have as well, feel free to experiment with that and discover, look at why it is that, that trait, that characteristic speaks to you so deeply because there is information in that for you. So here we are. It's just before the weekend. Next week is Thanksgiving. Please live every moment in gratitude. That will also help you find meaning in your life. And it will help move you forward and not get stopped by um, the obstacles that prevent you from uh, feeling fully expressed and from being connected. I asked my father, who has been um, gone for the last three years, what success meant to him. And for him, success meant opening his own business and making more money than he was making then. And even though he was successful in other areas of his life, he had four amazing children living extraordinary lives. He had a very supportive wife. He himself did not feel successful. The ruler by which he measured his life was not accurate because he was an, a, an amazingly successful man. So I urge you to create a ruler by which to measure your life, find your life purpose, and live it every day. And so with that, I want to remind you to think wise with your mind, feel wise with your heart, and move wise with your body. Until next week, take good, great care and give me a call if you'd like information on your life purpose.